What's up space enthusiasts? Today we're diving into something absolutely mind-blowing. SpaceX just dropped news that has the entire aerospace industry scratching their heads. They're planning to deliberately strip away heat shield tiles from Starship's most vulnerable areas during Flight 10. Now, I know what you're thinking. That sounds completely insane, right? Taking off protection when your spacecraft is screaming through the atmosphere at 17,000 miles per hour? But here's the thing, this isn't madness. This is Elon Musk's masterstroke, and it's about to change everything we know about getting to Mars. So buckle up, because we're about to explore why this seemingly suicidal move is actually pure genius. Let's start with what SpaceX is actually planning for Flight 10, because this is way more radical than the headlines are suggesting. Picture this, you've got a spacecraft hurtling through Earth's atmosphere at 17,000 miles per hour. The temperatures outside are hot enough to melt copper, we're talking about 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. And SpaceX brilliant plan? Remove the heat shield tiles from some of the most vulnerable areas. Most traditional aerospace engineers would call this absolute suicide. But here's what they're missing SpaceX, isn't just randomly yanking off tiles and hoping for the best. These removals are surgically strategic. They're testing specific areas to see exactly how they behave under these extreme conditions. But wait, it gets even more interesting. While they're removing some tiles, they're introducing something completely revolutionary metallic tiles paired with an active cooling system. This isn't just an evolution of existing technology. This is a fundamental shift in how we think about thermal protection. And here's the kicker, the heat shield experiment isn't even the most daring part of Flight 10. They're also attempting something that's never been done before, landing the super heavy booster using only two engines instead of the usual three. Think about what this means for a second. We're talking about a 230-foot tall rocket booster, basically a flying skyscraper trying to land on just two engines. One of the central engines will be intentionally disabled mid-flight, forcing the system to rely on a backup engine from the middle ring. Why would they risk something so audacious? Because if you can successfully land a massive rocket booster with just two engines, you've just made the entire system dramatically more fault tolerant. Remember, Flight 9? An engine failure during the landing burn ended that mission early. This test directly addresses that exact vulnerability. Now let's talk about the sheer engineering challenge here, because what SpaceX is attempting is absolutely incredible. Imagine trying to balance a skyscraper on two precisely controlled flamethrowers while it's falling from space. The margin for error is virtually zero. Both engines have to perform absolutely flawlessly, or the entire booster crashes into the Gulf of America. But SpaceX isren't stopping there. They're also stress testing the aft flaps those wing-like control surfaces that guide Starship through re-entry. They're deliberately pushing these components to their structural limits during maximum dynamic pressure. It's like testing a race car by driving it at its absolute braking point to understand exactly where that braking point is. The timeline is incredibly aggressive too. Liftoff is scheduled for Sunday, August 24th at 6.30 p.m. This timing isn't random. It allows daylight observation of both booster and ship landings, even though they'll be happening half a world apart. That's a crucial advantage for data collection. Here's what makes this approach so different from traditional aerospace thinking. NASA typically adds layers upon layers of safety margins and redundancy. Test conservatively, analyze for years, then maybe fly if everything looks perfect. Elon's team? They're flipping this entire philosophy on its head. They build fast, test right at the edge of failure, learn immediately, and iterate rapidly. Look at the numbers, Boeing Starliner took over a decade and $4.3 billion in cost overruns. Meanwhile, SpaceX has conducted nine Starship test flights in just over two years, learning exponentially more with each flight. Now here's where things get really interesting and why this Flight 10 approach is about to reshape the entire space industry. What SpaceX is doing isn't just another test flight. They're conducting research and development in public that benefits everyone. When SpaceX figures out metallic tiles with active cooling, that knowledge advances heat shield technology for the entire industry. Companies like Blue Origin and ULA are watching these tests incredibly closely. But let's talk about the economics here, because the numbers are absolutely staggering. 
Current launch costs to orbit run about $10,000 per kilogram. SpaceX's fully reusable Starship system is targeting a reduction to under $100 per kilogram. That's a 100 times cost reduction that would make Mars colonization economically feasible. And here's a detail most people completely overlook. This isn't just about Mars. The same technology enabling interplanetary travel also revolutionizes Earth-based logistics. Imagine cargo delivery anywhere on Earth in under an hour. Think about manufacturing facilities in orbit producing materials that are impossible to create under gravity. The competitive landscape is shifting rapidly. While other companies focus on incremental improvements to existing technology, SpaceX is developing capabilities that could make current launch systems completely obsolete. Flight 10's aggressive testing schedule puts them years ahead of the competition in real-world operational experience. Timeline-wise, this positions SpaceX perfectly for their 2026 Mars launch window. But success requires proving that Starship can survive repeated re-entries and land precisely. That's exactly what Flight 10's thermal protection experiments are designed to validate. Here's why Flight 10 changes everything, and it goes way beyond just this single test flight. If SpaceX successfully demonstrates two-engine landing capability and validates their new thermal protection approach, they're not just solving technical problems. They're proving that a completely different philosophy of space vehicle development actually works. Think about what happens next. Flight 11 could attempt the first ever tower catch of a returning starship. Even Musk himself calls this only a maybe. But if Flight 10's thermal protection tests succeed, they'll have validated that the heat shield can protect the catching points during re-entry. That's the missing piece enabling tower catches. And here's the remarkable part, successful tower catching doesn't just save money on recovery operations. It enables same-day reflight capability. Imagine landing Starship, refueling it, and launching again within hours. This transforms space access from an occasional expensive event to routine transportation infrastructure. Why would SpaceX accept this level of risk? Because the alternative conservative testing over decades means losing the 2026 Mars launch window. And missing that window delays Mars colonization by 26 months due to orbital mechanics. In Musk's view, that delay could mean the difference between establishing a self-sustaining Mars colony in our lifetime or not. But let's be realistic about the uncertainty ahead. The metallic tiles are completely unproven in the extreme environment of hypersonic re-entry. Active cooling systems add complexity that could fail catastrophically. The two-engine landing test pushes reliability requirements beyond anything attempted before. What happens if Flight 10 falls short? The tower catch attempt gets pushed to early 2025, delaying full reusability. Mars mission timelines shift. The entire Starship program faces additional scrutiny from NASA, which relies on Starship for their Artemis Moon program. But wait, there's more. SpaceX just shocked the rocket world again with their new grid fin design, and this breaks every aerospace rule in the book. The new SpaceX grid fins are 50% bigger. But here's the crazy part, they're using only three fins instead of four. How does removing a fin make a rocket more controllable? This seems to defy basic physics. When SpaceX first announced three asymmetric fins, aerospace experts called it aerodynamically impossible. Traditional rocket science says you need symmetry for control. But SpaceX's flight data revealed something incredible. During Block 2 booster returns, the top fin was essentially dead weight. Flying at shallow glide angles, it sat in the aerodynamic shadow with zero control authority. SpaceX was hauling 500 pounds of useless metal to space and back every single flight. But here's where Musk's team made their breakthrough. Instead of just removing the useless fin, they redistributed that weight into making the remaining three fins 50% larger. The result? More control with less complexity. Think about it like a modern fighter jet. Advanced aircraft use asymmetric designs because controlled imbalance creates superior performance. The naked side reduces drag, while the three massive fins provide precise steering control. So here we are, on the eve of what could be humanity's most ambitious attempt to make space travel routine. On August 24th, we'll discover whether SpaceX's bold gamble pays off.
The removed heat shield tiles will either validate a revolutionary approach to thermal protection or demonstrate the limits of aggressive testing. The two-engine landing will either prove remarkable fault tolerance or show why traditional safety margins exist. But here's what's already certain, regardless of the outcome. Flight 10 represents a fundamental shift in how we approach space exploration. Every data point collected, every system tested, every boundary pushed brings us closer to becoming a multi-planetary species. SpaceX isn't just testing a heat shield, they're proving that controlled failure leads to breakthrough faster than cautious success. By deliberately removing protection and pushing systems to their limits, they found the shortcut to reliable space transportation. This is exactly why SpaceX's approach terrifies traditional aerospace. While others add safety margins, SpaceX discovers the actual margins through real-world testing. Flight 10 is humanity's boldest step toward making space routine. Every removed tile, every two-engine landing test, every stressed component brings us closer to $100 per kilogram launches and Mars colonization within our lifetime. The countdown has begun, and the future of space exploration hangs in the balance. This is just the beginning of something extraordinary. What do you think about this aggressive testing approach? Will it reshape the entire space industry, or should SpaceX stick with more traditional development methods? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into the engineering breakthroughs shaping our cosmic future. The next giant leap isn't just about reaching space, it's about making space reach back to us. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this breakdown of SpaceX's revolutionary approach, check out our playlist on the future of space exploration. And remember, we're not just observers of the space race, we're witnesses to humanity's next chapter among the stars.